Super Media Bros Podcast is a founding member of the Odd Pods Media Network. A return so shocking yet not so shocking at the same time to the fact that we were just like, you, you know, uh, push the regular episodes aside and, and let's put this bonus episode out now. It's still weird, like not even in a bad, good anything way. It's just like a, huh, damn. Uh, uh, OK, right. Welcome to the Super Media Bros podcast, where two best friends give comedically informative takes on movies, music, pro wrestling, and more. I'm Richie. I'm Devin. This is a stocking stuffer bonus episode for the month of December for Santa Media Bros, and uh, it's quite literally the first right out of the gate episode of the month. We're talking about CM Punk's return to WWE, but before we get into that, Randy Orton also came back at Survivor Series, dude, and that that was awesome. By the way, yeah, it was good to see him back. I mean. They they didn't necessarily make that a surprise. They did announce it to basically cover up anything relating to Punk because according to Triple H, Paul Levesque, the deal came together really quickly, apparently as of like that afternoon. Oh, so they still weren't sure like two, three days before. Supposedly, Ink was not put to paper until that day. Wow. Like earlier in the week, they had like an hour long conversation, he and Phil, and like they came to terms on like what they were going to do and all this other shit. Now, before we get into the raw promo, the way that they had him come back was fucking genius. It Mm -hmm. wasn't like, Let's insert him at the top of the card. Let's insert him into a match. Let's insert him into an immediate storyline to the point where Hunter had an entire area in the back cleared out moments before he even walked out. He personally handled the production truck calls for the last bit of that Survivor Series War Games match. Personally called for the copyright logo to hit the bottom of the screen. Yep, just like the old school NXT days, dude personally called for punk's music after that like they basically did their mcu moment where they were like hey here's some post credits dude it was really fucking cool and what i loved about it is that it wasn't a promo he didn't attack anyone he didn't even like call anyone out visually it was just no i'm here you know uh as it should be right it was really fucking cool and look listen Randy came out looking like a fucking god. That dude, Randy Orton has, ne- okay, to me, and, and this is obviously like his his younger, like 20 years ago, young Randy Orton, like, you know, I'm talking like 03, 04, yeah. 05 shit. Even that included, Randy, to me, has never come out looking like less than a million bucks. Right. His weight has fluctuated, but he has never been out of shape. Yeah, he's never been garbage, like, yeah. at all. Which is crazy because a lot of these wrestlers, they they have their phases, you know. Orton has always looked incredible. Now it's like, good fucking lord! It, like, are, did did you and Batista start hanging out? Like, he came out looking like Triple H whenever he came back from that fucking quad tear. His neck alone looked Dude. like Triple H. <laughs> Bro, I was like, what the fuck? It's not even the Viper anymore. That's the Anaconda. Yeah, and I mean, uh. Not to get too far off track, but like that to me is like, okay, let's build some more muscle mass to keep the spine aligned and all this other shit. Like that's, that's what it looks like to me. Probably. Um, but I bring that up to say punk looks like he's beefed up too. He he has, uh, there's been, I don't remember where it was. It was, um, I want to say either wrestling headlines.com or something. The report was that he he was still in the gym every day training in case he got a call from whoever. And now here's the funny part. Before he signed with WWE, he was very, very close to signing with TNA. Oh, wow. Like would have debuted it hard to kill. Realistically, how much would you think that that would do for them? 
Oh, it would have been a huge deal for TNA. Um, and it's not like Punk was never a part of TNA before. Like that's no. certainly part of his history. I just, I just know that if he would have signed, it would have been good and bad at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like good for TNA, bad for him, probably. Right. I don't. And really, I don't think the uh, return would have been worth it. Not because Punk isn't. I think the attention to TNA would not be worth it. No, no. Particularly because what are they on? Axis? I don't even know if they're going to be staying. That's the thing. Like, TNA has moved around so long. Yeah. We don't even have Axis TV here. That's the only reason I can't watch Impact. That's my point is... I don't have it. You don't have it. None of my friends have it. Like, and I'm not even shitting on Axis. I know that if I had a show and it got put on Axis, I'd be like, hell yeah, dude, I'm on fucking TV, bro. Yeah, but whenever you're missing out households for this, that's not good. You need to be on a network that's in more homes and shit. Right. So I I don't know. Uh, As far as that goes, it's like, Look, let's get down to the actual promo, okay? What are your thoughts on it? Because we have we've actually not talked about it. That's whatsoever. the whole point, too. Okay, so my initial thought, and I'm gonna I'm gonna break this down from the after hype from Survivor Series going into Raw. Mm-hmm. My initial feelings on it, having let it sit and then watching it again. When you're coming out of Survivor Series, shit, what's next? Punk with a mic in his hand. Yeah. That, that's, that's no question. The promo we've got, and now bear in mind, this is how WWE has always been. WWE likes to pretend, and even in the Triple H era, to some degree, WWE likes to pretend that any of your time outside of the company did not exist. Mm-hmm. Punk's promo felt like his initial debut for AEW, just a little less so and quick, which yeah. they cut his promo short because they were running out of time. Yeah, I want to say I read that the Orton and Dominic match went over. Yeah. But as far as the content, at first, you know, you're thinking, okay, he's going to come out guns blazing. He didn't, which I'm also not surprised at. If he's really turned a new leaf over, if he's really done. All this, which supposedly there is a there's a behavior clause in his contract. I read about that, and as soon as I read the phrasing, I was like, <laughs> okay. right." But my first thought, and you're gonna laugh at this, like okay. this this is the humor part. Okay. When I first heard the promo, and he was like, "I'm home," I was like, "Oh, the check cleared." Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, I did see a meme, so I'm not gonna take credit for, it, but. It had said something along the lines of like, uh, look into the this man's eyes. He he ain't happy to be there. And I I was like, I mean, it's one still image, you know, so it's unfair to say. But why do I feel like, I don't know. So I'm a diehard punk fan, you know. Me too, so. Yeah, like at the end of the day, we'll watch him wherever he goes if we can make it happen, you know. Uh, that's not to downplay this or downplay him it's a huge deal it course corrected wwe you know like it changed what their history is going to be right uh it certainly made in my opinion one of their best cliffhangers of all time sure not even just survivor series period point point blank like but there's a part of me that goes okay at this point, how much of this, he even says he's here to make money. How much of this is money? How much of this is ego? I'm nervous. I'm not shitting on anybody. I'm just kind of like. You're waiting on the other shoe to drop. Right. I'm like, all right, I've been burned not once, but twice in the last like couple of years. And I bring up the fact that I'm a diehard fan because this was my childhood, you know, like. CM Punk was one of my heroes. CM Punk was the reason I got back into professional wrestling. Yeah, and he was one of the reasons where I felt seen 
as a little kid. Like I, I looked at him and I was like, I, I like him. And at first, you know, my clean cut family was like, why? And I was like, I, 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 I just relate. Well, you shouldn't. I, I do. You know, so it's, it's not me poo-pooing on him or like trying to cry tribalism or anything like that. It's just kind of like, I don't want to get hurt again. I don't care whose fault it was in the other companies. I just don't want it to happen again. Right. And I, I have things to say about that as well. But getting to this promo again, like I said, that me, the whole, all oh, the check cleared, that was the, that's the humor part. Mm-hmm. I believe him. Okay. I believe him because think about it this way. And I, and I, and this might not be the best comparison or what have you. If you're in a relationship with somebody mm. and they hurt you, what are you doing? You're, you're lighting a match and setting fire and you don't give a fuck who else gets burned in the process. Correct. Yeah, dude, especially us. We, we, some, we, some grudge holders. Punk leaves WWE in 2014 amidst a lot of shit. Mm -hmm. Can't blame him. Don't blame him. No. However, that is a different WWE than the landscape we have now. Vince McMahon is no longer involved. You have a uh, 10 year older Paul Levesque who, by my view of his work with the NXT people, trying to bring that work ethic onto the major like to like uh, SmackDown and raw. He gives a shit. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a guy who wrestled. He, he, uh, he gave everything to the business and wants to continue that. I don't think the whole it's best for business thing is a hundred percent, a clickbait line or a, or a uh, bullshit line. Right. Yeah. Look at the fences. He's mended. He, he mended with warrior savage to an extent fucking um san martino san martino absolutely so nobody should be surprised that punk is back in the wwe by those standards however i think people should be surprised that he's back in the wwe just based on recent actions right i think that's what the issue is so uh, yeah like with with aew here's here's the whole fucking thing vince hurt him dude like a lot of the fucking decision making all the political like backstage bullshit now, like I would leave too. Yeah. So enter AEW. You got a company that starts up from people that have also been burned by people in the industry that are like, fuck this. We're going to make our own shit because they're tired of the same shit. You get CM Punk. That's pretty fucking sweet because you've pretty much at that point. I don't give a fuck who thought what in 2021. To see Phil Brooks on AEW television was like getting the fucking professional wrestling holy grail. It really was, dude. However, the first year is great until Adam Page rolls his fucking, quote, empty-headed dumb fuck mouth on live television. And I'm quoting Punk here. And I know what a lot of people out there are thinking. Like, I'm not shitting on Adam. I am saying what Punk said. But to be very fair and objective he fucking started that shit and i've i have not lost sight on that like and that's why i wanted to make it clear and say like i don't care who started what because like at at this point like we're we're fans of wrestling period we like both companies sure like we we also watch new japan we'll yep we'll we'll watch whatever is put in front of us uh but the thing is is like what's bothered me ever since punk got suspended that first time is whoa, 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 wait, I understand that the parties that got suspended to begin with and or fired were the ones that were involved in a physical altercation. But are, are we, are we all ignoring who actually started this? This is what I'm getting at during that, during the infamous fucking press conference, punk, saw everything for what it was the fucking i don't and this is this is coming from somebody who is a diehard aew guy Mm -hmm. the inmates run the asylum there oh my god yeah he sees that that's not how he does business think about where he came from he came from a company that vince mcmahon fucking ran dude Mm -hmm. say what you will about the dude the the ceo of ceos 
ran that fucking company for the better part of 50 years. Damn near. Mm-hmm. Called them out for their shit because I'm going to say it. The Bucks are a bunch of fucking children. Mm-hmm. They fucking are. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Do I like them as wrestlers? Yeah. Do I like them as people? Me, Maybe. I, I, th- I think that they need to grow up a little. I don't mm-hmm. fucking care what anybody thinks. I, 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 I see that they probably need to grow up. I mean, you, you lose your money maker and, you, and then you mock jog around the fucking ring on a show where this is what I'm getting to. I swear to God, this, this is, this is not like a full on soapbox episode, but like, <laughs> I need to say this shit because I'm going to get pissed if I don't punk sees this shit. And it's like, it's like a fraternity of motherfuckers and there's constant fucking shots behind the scenes and in promos. And so when he calls them out for their shit, they barge into his dressing room where he was like, I clearly said, leave me alone. Like they just barge in the shit happens. Everybody gets suspended. The Bucks get rewarded with a fucking trios championship with Kenny punk gets his own show. And a lot of people, here's, here's the thing though. People are like, Oh, they gave punk his own show. They kind of had to because he can't go to dynamite. So when he gets his own show and people that want to work with him, these same crybabies bitch and complain that they can't go to his show. People that didn't want to work with him are complaining that they can't go to his show. Make it make sense. Then he gets called out by fucking Jungle Boy <laughs> and answers this call. Punk answers this call and then gets fired and dragged publicly and then watching these people do like mockery on his fucking show after he's out of work. Do you expect him to just not go to WWE at this point? Right. Like punk could have very well gone scorched earth. He could have talked with Hunter and been like, I want to go scorched earth and fuck this competition. But WWE still does not see AEW as competition. Mm -hmm. I say all this to circle back to his promo by ignoring AEW altogether. It's it's the bigger slap in the face than to acknowledge them on your television show. That that's where I'm at with Punk. Like he may have turned a new leaf. It might be the behavioral contract clause. He may just be like, I want to get over this and cement my legacy that I left behind ten years ago. Because let's be honest, even his work in AEW was fantastic. One his, of the more believable match every time he was out there. Right. So my thing is, you know. AEW had a kind of a harder style. A lot. I hear people like, oh, he, he, he's not a great wrestler. Like all this other, he's a fantastic wrestler. You have a product where the product and the in ring shit moves way quickly. Oh yeah. Punk is not a high flyer. I'm tired of people. And it's not just with him. It's with anybody. I'm sick and tired of people saying like this wrestler sucks because he doesn't do flip flop and fly all over the place. Mm hmm. Punk's a great physical storyteller. Exactly. And that's the other thing, too, is like, look at his gimmick. Look at his character. And I mean, I know it's easy to say, well, it's not a gimmick or character. That's just Phil Brooks. But which is true. But I'm just pointing out, like, look at what you are presented with. It doesn't make sense for him to do flips and everything. That's not to say that he physically can't. It's just that why would you? Dude, Will Ospreay and all of them, you know, I'm even a Kenny fan, you know? Like- right. Punk's, Punk's best five opponents in matches in AEW were Darby Allen, Samoa Joe, Maxwell Jacob Freeman, Dax, the match he had with Dax. Yes, yes. And Hobbs. I was about to say, don't sleep on the first match that he had on Rampage with Hobbs. That was fun. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, I was watching that on my phone while I was driving 95 miles an hour down uh, Martinville. St. Martinville and you. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm getting at is punk is about <laughs> to have some fucking great goddamn matches with Seth Rollins. Mm-hmm. You know, that's coming. Oh yeah. And I think he's going to get his mania main event. He's going to, he's going to get his, his main event night. One of a buy one, get two special. And that's where I'm also lukewarm, not in a shitting on him way. It's just kind of like, all right, you can say all you want. Like, you you changed. It's been 10 years. Motherfucker, that promo wasn't 10 years. No. You know, so it's like, it almost comes across like, and I don't think this is true, 
I really don't, but it it's very easy to see it like a bitter girlfriend situation. That and you know the word hypocrite gets tossed a lot, which yeah, I, I want I want to really pose a question to people out there, like that are in on this or that are um, aware of everything we've talked about and all this other shit. It's like, aren't we all in a sense? We are. And that's the thing too, is it, it can come across like I'm overly playing devil's advocate, bro. We were just talking about how I'm going to buy a new CM Punk shirt. Yeah. I want a hoodie. I want a t-shirt. Yeah. Like I'm still a fan. I'm not saying fuck this guy. I'm really not. I'm just like, I, I, I feel like, okay, how excited should I get? Should I taper expectations? Right. Like, it's a touch and go situation. It's more or less like, okay, let's see if he fucks this up. And then they're like, cause you don't, you don't want to like fully invest and then like be let down because that's what we did with AEW in his run. We, right. we fully invested and we got let down. Yeah. And you could say that it's not even his fault. It was the company. The first time he left both it, sides. Yeah. Like, no, nah, I just, I'm nervous. That's what it boils down to is like, I feel kind of nervous. Right. It's tepid. A, yeah. Cause the, the last thing about his, his release from AEW that I, that I want to say is that the weekend of all in, I knew that that was going to happen before the Jack Perry situation. He was supposed to have had a sit down with Khan and the bucks at a table physically to squash this shit. Right. They fucking bailed on him last minute. Then on top of which, and, and Tony Khan is no saint. I don't give a fuck. The man gives Punk a phone number for his ride to the venue. Mm -hmm. I know. It doesn't work. There's no booking for that. Punk, and I, I swear to God, you can't make this up. It's fucking true. It was on fucking social media and people corroborated this. Punk had to take one of the fucking subway underground trains to the venue on his own dime. Tell me that man is not professional when he could have easily just said, fuck you. I'm not showing up. Yeah. And, and that's if he thing. knew he wanted out, you that know, was his out. Exactly, dude. Like, and that's, that's why I'm saying like, that wasn't punk's fault. Right. And also people being like, oh, well, WWE was like a last resort. No, during his first suspension, before he came back, he was visiting, he was visiting a fucking live event. He could have been like, hey, bro. I'm not going back. That was me thinking he tested the waters because he did talk with, with Paul briefly. Mm -hmm. I think he got, I think on both sides, there were like, that would be great, but contractually, we can't talk about that. Let's meet up down the road. I really feel like in some fashion, he was trying to get fired mm -hmm. because if he got terminated, the contract is null and void. Then he can go anywhere. If Tony wanted to, Tony Khan could have made him sit out that two years and had to pay him, but he couldn't compete elsewhere. Fuck. Again, so many factors play into it. Punk is back in WWE and... Um, Which we do need to stress that that is incredible. You know? Fuck yeah, it's incredible. I, I, I don't, I'm not glossing over that by any means. Yeah, like, like, and that's the thing too, is like I want to bring that up because like I said, I feel like it's come off as negative Nancy for me, but like I said, I don't want to get hurt again. Like it's, there's so much that goes in, into this and only time will tell. Um, I'm hoping that things go well though, because we, we got three years to find out. Surely in three years, we're going to get some good, good. Yeah. That's my point though. I think, I think he knows that this is his very last shot at anything to do with this business. I think AEW reignited his love for the business. Yes. I will give them that. I think him getting back in the ring and working with the talent he did, let him know like, okay, here's who I can hang with and here's who I can't. And it's not that he can't hang with him. It's just like he got injured a couple times from that style. WWE has a very different style. Mm -hmm. I think he fits that mold a little bit better. It's more theatrical. It's like pro wrestling is theatrics. Yeah, but I think WWE is a little safer. I think if AEW had been around 10 years ago, he would have thrived. He would have excelled. There wouldn't have been any like 
injuries or anything like that. Right, right. I just, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like. Shit happens. You're 45. Like. Yeah, dude. I mean, I, dude, it, once I hit 45, I know I'm going to be begging for mercy, dude. Like, I get it. Yeah, I think this is his final run, and I think it's going to be a great one. I hope that he and Seth Rollins, because I, I, I know that's what's coming. I hope he and Seth Rollins tear the fucking house down at Mania, because you know they're going to. I hope Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes tear the fucking house down at night, too, because I'm pretty sure that's coming, too. But I'm fucking stoked. I'm stoked that he's back on a WWE program. Lots of potential. Uh, I, I see him living up to these expectations. Mm -hmm. He's got a lot of work to do. He's got a lot of trust to build. He's got a lot of uh, people to prove wrong. And if there's anything about CM Punk that you should know is like, he's, he's, he's going to do that. Oh yeah. That's the thing, dude is like, regardless of what they can say about the Phil Brooks person, when CM Punk says something like you can, you can pretty much guarantee that it should happen like right right he's gonna draw a lot of money he's going to sell a lot of merch he already is doing this dude yeah like like to end on that like your point dude he had the most social moment in that comp and wwe's history which is insane also the man is number one this past week because because you realize aew still has to push his merchandise out because they gotta get rid of it that man is number one in both companies for selling merch right now at the same fucking time. <laughs> That's fire. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. I know. I'm laughing about it because I'm just like, man, this motherfucker is like laughing all the way to the bank right now. Oh, yeah. It's just like, we'll see what happens long term. I don't think it's going to be fights or anything like that. I just see more than anything because I don't think he's going to get fired from here. I, not unless not unless Kevin Owens has something to say about bruh. it. But no, my point is like how upset will he be? How agitated will he get? Will he make tweets? Will he make Instagram stories? Dude hasn't been on Twitter in a long time. But what I'm getting at is just the idea of like, okay, I know you're not gonna do any fuck shit, but how petty are we talking? Right. Are you going to do the old tweet delete? You know? Right, right. That's where I'm like, okay, we, we, I, I want to see what happens. Here's, here's my final word on this. Then mm-hmm. I swear this is my final word on this. <laughs> Your second final word. No, no, no. The, the final word. Okay. How do I know he's not going to do all this shit? The inmates don't run the asylum in WWE. That's true. Yeah. Not that AEW is not professional, but they could be more professional than they are right now. And again, that is coming from a diehard. I think the regime needs help. Right. And there's nothing wrong with, I feel like everybody assumes that you have to pick a side. You have to pick a team. It's like, no, I I don't. Do do I admit that I like the AEW product more? I do. Mm. WWE's product is so cookie cutter that I don't have to pay attention like i barely paid attention to raw and i still know what happened and guess what if i missed raw which i've missed a shitload of them i watched the ple's and there are so many recaps that i don't need to watch week to week programming right yeah because wwe is a lot of microphone talking in the ring fuck shit with a few matches to piece the stories together aew is a fuck shit ton of matches with a little bit of talking to piece the story together and the in-ring action tells the story more than the fucking segments do Mm -hmm. again i like both products for very different reasons oh yeah for sure but punk and wwe weirdly shit feels right in the world again it's surreal it still hasn't fully clicked yet i don't know because like two of my favorites growing up cm punk and randy orton came out the same night like after we were worried about orton possibly retiring and punk being in the position that he was. And then they threw R-Truth on top of that, who I I, I love R-Truth, you know, like who he's one of those guys that can do no wrong to me. Little Jimmy, dude, I fucking love it. Like I grew up with that, man. Like I'm, I'm 27 now. So I was a kid 
So uh, obviously not going to complain about any of this. It's just kind of like, fuck. Right. What a night. No shit. No, but uh, we'll see how the promos go here on out. I think it's almost unfortunate that they have to ignore AEW because I feel like they allowed him more time on that first show back with his return in Chicago and that promo. I feel like that was a promo that actually said something. Whereas here at this point, it's his third time saying I'm back. And so by now it's like, okay, I wouldn't call it rehash. It's just more of like, not much was said really that I didn't already hear. Doesn't need to be. Right. This is a this is a fucking marathon. This ain't a sprint. For sure. That's how WWE works. And also we we can't forget like a lot of those people didn't see those shows. So to them this was probably all new. And that's the entire uh the point of it, honestly. Yeah. And uh again, Punk is just laying groundwork for whatever his upcoming first storyline back with the company is going to be and again i think that is seth rollins i think it's the royal rumble getting to wrestlemania his words where he uh he said a wise man once told him that to get everything he needed out of this place he would need to leave and come back that wise man is roman reigns wise man uh paul Heyman. so do with that what you will i still think it's cody rhodes story to finish with roman but i do see Reigns and Punk colliding because those are the company's two biggest stars. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll see in due time. No, that's got me excited. Like I will say that like there, there's a lot of matches that I would like to see. Yeah. I I think, I think if, if Brock Lesnar and CM Punk can have a really great match, I know that he can have a really fucking big barn burner with Roman. Oh, for sure. And it would be a believable match. Like it would be one of those, exceptions to the rule of like oh roman reigns is having a title match against somebody i actually don't know who's gonna win this one yeah so it'd be like mania uh with him and Rhodes all over again because right you know we we banked on cody winning and he didn't so like again time's gonna tell but I, i'm excited to see where that uh that goes if it were up to me yeah i'm i'm putting rollins's strap on him same that's that's what i want to happen it's safe it's safe and also it just looks right. Yeah, yeah, I was I was thinking the same thing. That belt that belt looks like it would fit him very well. So All right, guys, we're going to get out of here. If you want to follow us on social media or visit our website for any future episodes, uh, click the links in the show notes below and uh, be sure to like and subscribe if you want to uh, continue uh, following us on YouTube. Leave us a rating and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Good Pods and Podchaser. Next week, we'll officially kick off the continuation of our our week-to-week episodes for Santa Media Bros, which is our Christmas-themed month for the year. So be sure to check back for those. We've got four movies we're going to talk about, uh, a couple of special guests, and uh, some fuckery. So, yeah, dig it. But until then, I'm Richie. No, I'm Devin. Shades on. We're off.